And we're live. It's been we a week already. <laughs> Can you believe it's been a week already? Goes fast. It's it been really, really fast. I had a good time last week, and uh, I thought it was, uh, I thought it was fun. I got some really cool feedback from people, and um, one of them being, you need to show some more pictures. So we got pictures this week for all those out there wanting to see pictures. <laughs> We need to put out a, like a coloring book version of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> With our faces on it. <laughs> Color <know>. Mitch's face. <laughs> <laughs> what shade is Mitch? <laughs> Greasy. <laughs> Greasy. Yeah, me too. Huh? So anyway, uh, for those that are new, if there's new people here, which there probably are, my name is Lance James. Um, I was the original publisher of Speed and Chrome Illustrated Magazine, uh, the print magazine. Now we're doing this video thing, and I'm, I've partnered with Mitch and Tony, uh, my partners in crime, producing uh, videos for YouTube. So um, if you haven't seen the channel, if this is new to you, please go to YouTube. Let me find the, uh, there we go. Go to YouTube, search Speed and Chrome. There's all kinds of uh, really cool content on there. In fact, I can share this other screen too. I can figure out how to do it. Boom, there we go. Speed and Chrome channel. Photograph at the top taken at Eagle Field Drags, which we definitely need to have a show or three about Eagle Field. Need to get Rocky Phillips on here and yeah. have him talk about it, which um, maybe we can have him on the show the week that they were supposed to actually have the event because it looks like it's going to be canceled in California due to these all the virus junk. So. Um, yeah, but yeah, Rocky's Rocky would be great to come on here. I think I want to see this is the, I think last year was 10 years, if I'm not mistaken. I think this is the 11th year of that event started as a one, I think it was May only, um, once a year. And then it went to two weekends a year after like about three years or so, uh, but that's a fantastic event. So. Well, for those of us who aren't on the uh, left coast, tell us about, <laughs> about uh, what, what is the, I mean, I can guess it looks like nostalgia drags, but. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of a nostalgia run what you brung. Uh, it's Eagle Field was originally a bomber training base during World War II. And currently it's, it's privately owned now. The land's privately owned, but the little airport is still there. There's some hangars. Uh, they restore vintage World War II aircraft and tanks and artillery and they have an event once a year it's like a fundraiser it's called the fly-in and it's uh i think it's in may as well it's around may i think i could be wrong okay. um but it's a cool it's a more of a dress period period dress so people dress in 1940s whatever they come there and have they have music and the dinner and everything is pretty neat. racer cars so, but the but the Eagle Field that's the origin the origination of Eagle Field, and then Rocky wanted to uh, have a place where people just brought out their old stuff just to race. Um, you could probably kind of compare it to the Ham Drags, okay? But this isn't a racetrack. This is an airport runway. So there's no. In the very very beginning, it was just really old uh, asphalt that was cracked. And you couldn't really do burnouts because it would fall apart. <laughs> and then they did some fundraisers, and they re they've repaved it. And then they, they have a burnout box they built now. Um, and so they the burnout each box the burnout box is only for one race, right? Or did they bring the burnouts in? Because the first eight years or so, uh, there was no burnouts allowed right. for the Eagle Field drags. Yeah. But then the Lions reunion or whatever the the other race. Yeah. That has the timing lights. Yep. They allowed burnouts. Okay. Yeah. That's so cool. it's, yeah, it's that's it's, the cool thing. It's it's flag it's start. Yeah, flag Run start. You brung. It's no ladders, no eliminations. Yep. It's really just grudge racing. It's just, just a fun. chance to come out and guys. The first couple of years were just dragging all kinds of crazy stuff yep. out of the barns. Some old alters and some old gassers and a lot of old dragsters. And so there's you know. It's still relatively safe, uh, but in the most recent years, they started bringing out the fuel alters oh, wow. and some of the alcohol-powered stuff for exhibition passes. So it really is a hoop. It's a real good time. 
And it's only eighth mile, so you're you're not talking real, real high speeds at the okay. end. And uh, it's no prep. That's the other cool thing. And there's no prep, which means you're not going to hook real hard, so you're not going to go very fast. There's a lot of <laughs> eighth mile burnouts, essentially. Um, but it teaches you how to drive, too. There's a lot of people that don't drive real well, and they'll go out half track, and then they'll end up sliding sideways and going off into the dirt, and that's not uncommon. So yeah, it's – uh. It's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. I've been to, I don't even know how many I've been to. So produced a couple of, of DVDs on it, which aren't on YouTube, which I'm working on getting those up there. There's some music rights issues uh, yeah. <laughs> from where, when I originally produced it for DVD and all that good stuff. So yeah. I'll, we'll figure it out. So. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, the, this whole virus thing, because this weekend would have been the Stray Cat 500 up in Dewey. Oh, okay. And uh, that was one I was looking forward to going to. And my son's super disappointed because he always likes going up there. And it, it's, it's I mean, short of the dress and everything at the same time, you know, they they take the kind of a town square and they lock it, block it off and everybody parks out there. And and, and Mick with uh, Stray Cat, they do a they do a fabulous job. It is just, it's the best time and it's very family oriented and bands and all that. But Unfortunately, they had to uh, cancel this year too. Otherwise, I'd be leaving for that tomorrow after after work. But, but do what we can, I guess. So, Mitch, you had a Nova fall in your lap since last week. Yeah, it's Saturday. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, a friend of mine um, had nowhere to put it and needed it uh, to go somewhere, so the city didn't tow it. So we worked something out. It was, uh, she had owned it since high school. So like 20 wow. plus years, it was a daily driver and she uh, sent it up North to a friend of hers to have it painted. And they blew it all apart, took it all down to just a bare shell, prepped it, did all the body work, put it in sealer. And then he kind of fell out on the project. So they went up and brought it home and it just sat on the side of the yard for, I don't know, a couple of years. It's a 62, and, uh, 62 top, right? post, yeah. And uh, so, you know, I mean, it, it, at some point I discovered it was like a little street strip car, had a four-point cage in it. Oh, wow. And uh, it's got slapper bars and that kind of thing. It's set up for a V8 and a 350. Oh, cool. It was a daily driver until they, they took it apart. Oh, wow. And uh, so if anybody's looking for a cool project, uh, <laughs> you can, uh, you can uh, send a, a message through Facebook. But uh, yeah, so right now it's just sitting. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it, but it's, I mean, it's a dead solid car. No rust anywhere on it, you know, everything. And I have everything for it. So it could get, it could go back together real fast. But. You have to send me some photos. And if you still have it next week, we'll throw some photos up so people can yeah, check right it out. Cool. Help them find a new home. What's going on with the gasser? So, yeah, so finally, <laughs> we, we briefly spoke about it last week, but so the gasser is finally leaving my house. We're loading it on a trailer tomorrow, and on Saturday, it's actually going to a shop and having uh, the metal, all the metal work done on it, finally, after, I don't even want to think about how long, but it's going to be, they're going to do the wheel wells uh, externally, internal wheel tubs, going to cage it, going to... Um, put a tilt front end on it, get all that situated, um, a little bit of rust repair. The firewall needs a lot of work, so that's going to get redone. Um, it's quite a laundry list of stuff. So it's we've been planning for this since it's not been quite a year, but almost, and for all everything to line up, schedules and everything. And so, yeah, so Saturday it's getting delivered, and um, – yeah, it'll be out of my out of my driveway. So I'm very, very, very excited about that. All right. So hey, real quick, I, I got a a book I wanna talk about. Let's see if I can share this. So Porto Books, which used to be motor books, they bought them out. Uh, I got this book here. You can see it. Vicki Thompson, in his own words, uh, very, very, very cool book. If uh, anybody's looking for something to read while they're at home, uh, not being able to go anywhere, check out this book. Um, it's it's really, really cool. It's it's in, 
You the know book the, is written the one question words. everybody's going to ask? What's that? Does it got pictures? It's got a lot of pictures. A lot of really, really nice pictures. So, yeah, people will be fine, you know. For the guys that don't want to read and just look at the pictures, you're, you're covered there too. So, anyway, I wanted to plug them real quick. They, uh, they sent me this book, and I've just been like, actually, I've been lazy, and I was supposed to write up a thing for the website. And uh, I didn't, so I'm like, I'm gonna give them a plug here because it's a, it's a great, it's a great book. I mean, icon, you know, historic, hot rodder racer, you know. I mean, everybody's. If if you haven't heard of Mickey Thompson, then, then you're not a hot rodder. <laughs> Period. He affected uh, the world, you know. Yeah, he's done. He's done it all, really. Yeah, yeah. His uh, land speed stuff and his drag race stuff and all that good stuff. So. Well, here we are, week two, and we actually got our first special guest for the show, and I'm pretty excited about this. Um, if I can figure out how to bring him on, let's see here. Technology. I do this every day for a living. <laughs> Believe me. What time's your VC? There we go. Hey, Rich. So we met, we met Rich, or I met Rich, I should say, uh, quite a few years ago, and then we ended up getting connected on Facebook, and then talked, and I think the very, very first time, and you may not remember this, Rich, but you sent me the intake manifold for my truck, my oh, 62 yeah. unibody, so I, I needed a B manifold, four barrel manifold, and I was looking for one, Rich had one, so I got the intake manifold from him, which is still on the truck, and... Uh, Backstory on that is I bought the unibody to pull the gasser with to have a period correct pull rig for the, for the drag car. So, yeah. So, anyway. But Rich uh, has a couple of really, really awesome cars. One of them being, let me see if I can share this. One of them being the, uh, the Battlebird. And um, right here on the screen if you go to our youtube channel you can watch this feature and um so there's uh what's the deal with this photo rich that was uh that was the original car in dean mccann's garage at his home where he kept it and uh he would work on it there and race it uh, on weekends uh, in the so Midwest. this is this is the car that you own, or this is the original? No, no, this, this is the original. The original Battlebird. Okay, okay. Yeah. Dean and is the, a fabulous guy, still with us, thank God. And, and this uh, is yours, me. or this is this a different one? That is one? mine. That's okay. mine. Uh, we call it a reconstruction. It's a just a super accurate copy of the original as it appeared in 1957. Okay. Because the original now has been modified for modern vintage racing and uh it's not it's not true to its roots let's put it that way so i worked very hard with dean and, uh, pictures and stuff to try to get the car like it looked at daytona beach in 50 cents yeah it's it's beautiful so if you guys haven't seen this or been to our web our youtube channel go check it out this this car is uh absolutely incredible so we're here to talk about actually that's the that's the battle bird there too right so we're going to talk about this beast what you call red lightning right yes yes that's from its moonshine roots <laughs> so it's, tell, uh, us, tell us the, yeah. tell us the story of okay. uh well in uh in 1957 ford set out to knock the checkered flags out of Chevrolet advertising. They want it to be the best in, in stock cars and land speed and things like that. So uh, to that end, they started a supercharged engine program with a wide block 312s. And actually Dean McCann, the gentleman I just uh, spoke about, he actually designed the uh, supercharger setups for those engines. So he, he's just a wealth of knowledge on every level for 50s Ford stuff. So uh, what Ford did is they originally built uh, 100 supercharged cars in late December and early January, uh, 
57 to homologate them for NASPAR. Uh, and then uh, they took they took them to Daytona Beach in 57 and did very, very well. Uh, one of the full-size Fords hit 136 miles an hour. Wow. And the supercharged fuel-injected Battlebird made an unofficial run of 204 miles an hour on the... Uh, excuse me. My car has a very interesting history. It, it, the actual production cars weren't started to be built until uh, around May of 1957. So my car was scheduled to be built on June uh, 15th of 1957. And it was scheduled to go to Peter DePaulo Engineering, who built all of Ford's race cars in 56 and 57, to be modified for land speed record runs at Bonneville in August of 57. Unfortunately, Robert McNamara, uh, not a friend of mine at all, mm -hmm. duped Henry Ford the second into dropping out of racing and signing the uh, American uh, automobile manufacturers racing ban. So all the assets of Ford racing were sold off to Holman and Moody, who uh, had just formed at that point to take on all those assets. They paid $18,000 for an untold amount of speed equipment and many, many so they did quite well in the beginning. <laughs> so um, I'm assuming that the car went with uh, Home in the Movie to their headquarters in North Carolina. I can't, I don't have any, any written proof of that, but it's a reasonable assumption because the car wound up in the hills of Tennessee running moonshine. Apparently for many years. Wow. When uh, when my dad and I found it, it was in a shed in back of a barn uh, in Tennessee. And uh, when we were kids, my dad and mom used to drop us off to a friend of his in Tennessee from the Air Force during World War II. And, uh, you know, being kids, we were every place and everywhere you know, while we were playing around. And they spotted the car in a shed in back of a barn. Mm. And uh, as I was sort of checking it out, this very, very, uh, you know, scary, giant guy <laughs> over, comes out of, that, out of the house and he's like screaming, what are you doing there? What are you doing? Get out of there. And I'm like, I'm scared. You know, he's going to shoot me. <laughs> and uh, actually turned out to be a really nice guy. And he told me the whole story of the car, how it, uh, it was, he was running... He called it illegal alcohol yeah. with the car. He said, kid, that was the fastest car in the hills. And uh, they had blown up the engine somewhere along the line. And, of course, by then the 424, 427 Fords were around. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, there was no point in fixing it at that point. So he said he stuffed it away in the shed and he was going to turn it into, you know, a, a, like a bull ring type stock car. And thank God he did. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, I said, is it for sale? I was a 13-year-old kid. I had no yeah. money, of course. <laughs> and uh, so uh, he said, well, he says, no, nah, I don't think so. So I just kept talking to him for a while. He says, well, what would you take? What would it take, you know? And he says, well, I'll take $200 for it. And uh, I said, okay, well, when my dad comes back to pick me up, can we? Uh, can I? Can he come over here? He says, sure, bring your dad by. So you know, in August, my dad shows up to pick us up, my brothers yeah. and I. And uh, I said, Dad, you got to look at this 57 Ford. It's really cool. You know, it, it's, it's a great car. I, you know, I'll be driving in a couple of years. I can yeah. make money and get an engine for it and stuff. So uh, he said, my dad was a great guy. He says, yeah, we'll go look at it. So he negotiated it down to $150. Because wow. he told the guy, I got I to buy a tow bar to get it home. <laughs> So we dragged it home to New Jersey behind the uh, the 62 Mercury wagon, and uh, it became my high school car. I put a regular 312 in it and, uh, you know, three-speed on the floor and, and that sort of thing. And uh, So you flat-towed it that far? Flat-towed it that far, yep. Back, oh in, back in the you know, mid-60s, you could do that. Nobody cared. <laughs> it's not like, you know. That's amazing. Uh, so 
Yeah. So let me get this straight, Rich. <laughs> You're telling me you've had this car since you were 13 years old. Yes. Yep. Holy moly. That's and amazing. You know, the car was in really nice shape. It was dirty and beat up a little bit, but yeah. it had no rust at all because it was down south. Because, you know, 57 Fords are kind of rusty. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, actually, at one time, it was black with white pearl flames going into pink. Wow. <laughs> so, so the uh, incredible life the first few years it was on the planet then. What's that? I'm sorry. It lived a pretty interesting life the first few years it was on the planet then because it was oh, absolutely for sure. I mean, to go through, you know, being sold as a race car, going to Bonneville, running, running moonshine and then landing in a 13 year old's hands. is uh, yep. that's, that's quite amazing. Yeah. Fortunately, I liked the car, so I never wrecked it. Right. <laughs> but uh, sometime, I guess, in the early 70s, I was reading an article and I knew they had made supercharged Thunderbirds. And uh, I didn't know they made full-size supercharged cars. And, and it said, you know, the serial numbers in those cars all started with F. So I said, well, geez, I think mine starts with F. And I went out in the garage, opened the door, and sure enough, it's F. And I said, holy, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> so at that point, I, I sort of just stuffed it away and for about 35 years until I could get all the the uh, proper supercharger parts and you know, wow. do a nice cosmetic restoration on the car, the chrome. And, and just last year, I actually finally got the, the correct stock interior for it. Wow. So yeah. it's been a long time. Let me get a photo of that here. It's that. There yeah. we go. Uh, the, yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. That's gorgeous. That is, uh, every, every custom Tudor made had that same interior, every single one. Oh, wow. Like, Twelve thousand of them, or whatever they built, and it—it's uh, really neat because the car. The only option the car has is the supercharged engine. It's got, you know, no power, anything. One sun visor, no armrests, dog dish hubcaps, uh, rubber mats on the floors. I mean, it was the absolute cheapest thing you could possibly ever buy. It was about a uh, eighteen hundred dollar car with a three hundred and fifty dollar engine. That's pretty amazing. Wow. Uh, these, um, you know, the supercharged engines, uh, they uh, they advertised them at 300 horsepower, but they definitely did a big downgrade on that because they were actually making 340 to 370 horsepower, right. depending on the cam and the boost. Right. So, uh, you know, it was for insurance purposes, and you know, get a little edge, edge on the uh, on the racetrack too. Yeah, Ford liked those uh, blow through the carburetor setups, didn't they? The, yes, because the they early, did. the first Mustangs had the same setup, didn't they? Which which ones? The first Mustangs, the first uh, Shelby's. They were. The, yeah, they actually they put those in a box. The carburetor was inside a box. And they pressurized the carburetor, right? Pressurized the entire carburetor. Okay. Rather than just the, um, you know, just blowing through pressured air. Gotcha, gotcha. They, I mean, they were very ingenious. Or actually, I should say that Dean McCann was very ingenious because they, they indexed the mechanical uh, fuel pump to the supercharger boost. And it was very simple. They just ran a hose from the outlet of the supercharger down to the fuel pump underneath the diaphragm. And so that kept, uh, they kept the fuel pressure constant with the boost. It was very simple, but it worked. Huh. Um, let's see. Any questions? Uh, I could talk about this for hours. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. So this is... Uh, yeah. This has to do with the red car, or is this has to do with the the? This is red car, yeah. Okay. Well, actually, it's a battle beer, but Peter DePaulo, like I said, Peter DePaulo Engineering built all the Ford race cars, including the Battlebirds in 1957. Oh, okay. gotcha. Yeah. So here's yeah. here's I guess the obvious question. Yes. So you've got this incredibly rare timepiece, right? So to speak. And you've got a three hundred and 
whatever we'll call it, uh, wink, wink, supercharged engine. Um, right. Is this a car you actually get out and take through its paces? Oh yeah, absolutely. There's a, there's some pictures there of uh, I run it on the eighth of a mile. I don't take it on the quarter so much. It's just too much abuse. But uh, when uh, when English Town was open, they had a uh, uh, every every month or so they had something called the dig which was just open racing on the eighth of a mile so i always took it there i've driven it as far as lake george uh wow. you know for shows and things it, it gets driven it really That's does great. and because it's fun to drive yeah <laughs> definitely I bet. I bet. any idea how many of the original how many did you say they built initially uh, well, we know officially that they built 212 supercharged T-Birds because they were all built in Dearborn. With the full-size cars, it's a little more nebulous because they built them in several different plants, and only the Dearborn record still exists. So the best guess is somewhere between 250 and 300 supercharged full-size cars. Um, and there's 49 in the registry right now. Wow. But if you had... If you had the 350 bucks, you could get it in any body style. There's station wagons out there, wow. Rancheros, convertibles, and sun and Skyliners. I mean, they were everywhere. Wow. You know, really you makes you miss it. the days of dealer options. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the cool thing about 57 Fords was there was no deletes. Everything was an option. Everything. Wow. So if you if the dealer knew the right boxes to check. You know, you could you could get this totally stripped out car to go fast. That's pretty awesome. What was to say? Um, they did very well in NASCAR and USAC racing. They they uh, the little the race cars were largely the uh, the little custom tutors like mine. The Fairlane was a bigger body. They did very well in the convertible class, but. Uh, Ford won more races in 57 than all the other mates combined. They won, they finished first and second at Pikes Peak. That was uh, Jerry Unser. Uh, they won the Schneider Trophy in Indianapolis, which it was a, uh, what you, what you would call it? It was a, it was how fast can you go for 100 miles? And Ford won, supercharged Ford won that at over 130 miles an hour uh, average. And they also uh, did very, very well in uh, drag racing in the junior stock category right into the late 1960s. There was, there was one car that they called the damn yellow Ford because every time it showed <laughs> up, it hit everybody. And, uh, a buddy of mine, Frank Words, Frank's, Frank's 86 years old now, but he had a car just like mine in black, and he, he raced Atco and uh, Dover and a few of the other drag strips down, you know, in southern Jersey, and uh, he actually was the NHRA East Coast Superstock Champion in 1960 with that supercharged Ford. He beat he beat all the four, uh, four, 348 Chevys with four speeds. He beat all the 389 Pontiacs. He beat Grumpy Jenkins' fuel injected Chevy. He bested everybody. That's amazing. So, what would you say was the hardest piece to find to finish this car? Uh, let's see. The, uh, the hardest piece was the supercharger. I mean, they seem to be coming, for some reason, there's more around now than when I was first looking because the internet wasn't really in effect yet. And mm -hmm. it was hard to find those. And uh, actually, uh, a friend of mine, Jerry Ponder, who lives down in Georgia, he actually takes the superchargers and he rebuilds them with all new Paxton SN internals. Nice. So it's a brand new supercharger in an old case. Wow. Because you can't, there are no parts available for the BR fifty sevens, yeah, they're just they they are non-existent. So it's very similar to the same packs that they're building now. So he machines the cases, 
and puts all the new stuff inside. So it's like having a brand new supercharger. And uh, at about 5,000 RPM, it's putting out 11 pounds of boost. So wow. it's pretty good. So you said there's like 50 uh, on the registry. Just out of curiosity, yes. are you aware how many of those are uh, like complete factory originals, not like a rebuild? Uh, Jerry Ponders, uh, he's got a, a Fairlane. That car is original. He did original paint, original interior. You know, nobody took the engine apart ever. So, uh, yeah, Jerry's is probably the only one I know that hasn't been uh, messed with. Wow. Yeah. Incredible. <laughs> awesome, man. So thank you so much, Rich, for the tour. Oh, it's, you're welcome. It's been it's great. My pleasure. You know, week two, we already have our first guest. So, <laughs> but thank, thank you again. Thank you again for taking the time to to share your car with us. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me, and uh, it was good to talk with all of you. All right, Thanks again, Thanks, Rich. Rich. Take care, man. All right. Bye. We'll see you. Man, that's what crazy beauty, story huh? to find out that the car you brought at 13 years old was a one of 250 that were built for NASCAR, or Bonneville, or whatever. Right. Running right. I don't think yeah. my car has anything that exciting about it. <laughs> <laughs> An old Chevy built somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. They're, uh, I just I can't get over the holding on to a car for 35 years. <laughs> you know, but I mean, I, and I should have asked him, darn it, like at what point he discovered it was a supercharged car. Maybe he right. said it. I don't. I didn't catch it. Right. But, um, you know, you guys all know the story of the guy right. with the car that's been sitting in the garage. And every time you go over and you ask, hey, man, you want, nah, one day I'm going to fix it up. Yeah. You yep. know, the old cliche. Yep. And this guy actually did it. Yeah. You know, and look what he, look what he came up with. Yeah. What a neat car. It is. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, my DeSoto, it's, I think it's the oldest car I've had. I've never driven it, but I've had it for, I think it's 18 years. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the list, right? It always gets pushed further and further back, but That's I got to. I, I can't do it. If I can't drive it, I can't keep it. I got to, I got to thin the herd and um, actually, uh, you know, I'm glad, you know, the gas was going away. There's, you know, there's actually progress being made there. Um, I only got, I got a couple of more things. I'll mention this a little bit later in another show, but a 58 Ford panel truck that I drug out of the brush a little over a year ago. So it's running and driving now. So I just got a couple other little things to tidy up on it. And it's going to be sent down the road to its new owner. And then I can uh, repurpose that money into some of the other projects. So I'm not mentioning it yet because I got another one coming to the house next weekend um, <laughs> that I already own. I already own. I'm not buying a new one. I purchased it about six months ago. There's a couple of people that know about it, but I've kind of been pretty quiet about it. So, but it's coming to the house next weekend. So I'm, it's good timing. This one's leaving. The other one's coming. Now I got to do the shuffle in the garage and the driveway and see what goes where. So, um, yeah, since three, uh, three of the projects don't run, so or move under their own power. But. <laughs> <laughs> uh so no, I, don't, I dare don't take mine apart or I end up being the guy, mm -hmm. with the, you know, the car that doesn't run is going to rebuild it someday. So right. I, I just got to keep it running all the time. Otherwise, yep. I know I hear I hear horror stories about people that drive their car every single day and they go to do one thing and then the car ends up sitting for like 10 years. It's like so I was just going to change the carburetor or, you know what I mean? It's just like, yep. but then I decided to pull the engine. And then I decided to do the spray conversion. <laughs> and yeah. it's like rabbit hole, right? I was like, I, you're working done. on my son's truck today and uh, trying to figure out this gremlin that won't let it start. And right. I thought, well, okay, I need a win more. So I'm going to change out the, uh, you know, the, the PCV valves just so that way it, I have that win. Right. Well, the thing's been sitting so long for the little rubber grommet. It was solid and it, it wouldn't let go of the valve. And so uh, I ended up pulling it apart. Yeah. And then I had to take the valve cover off. And so now I'm like, well, now I can't start it because right. it's taken apart. And it's just like, stop, fix one thing, and right. move on. So. Right. 
Yeah, I, I don't drive my uh, the 62 Ford. Um, I've got a thousand miles on it now. It's taken me, I think, three years to put a thousand miles on it. But it sets so much that when I go out to start it, it usually won't start. I got to put the battery charger on it. I'm like, that's bad. That's really bad. So I got to drive my junk more than I. Well, right now we can't even leave our house, right? So it's really. I'll have to go and start it and let it let it run in the driveway for a while. Just take it to the grocery store. Yeah. That's what I did yeah. today. Got mine out and charged battery last night and got it out. Yeah. And went the long way so I could open it up on the freeway. So. Yeah. In fact, I gotta go. I gotta go check it tonight because I gotta move everything out of the driveway tomorrow because we're loading the gasser tomorrow. So. I've oh, got man. I've got one two. <laughs> Five cars in front of the gasser, so I got to get those all moved. <laughs> but at least those all run and drive, and then I can get the gasser out. We can push it on the trailer. Fortunately, that car's really light because it's completely gutted, so it's actually really easy to load on the trailer. Uh, no, no, come along or winch needed. Just shove it. And... Good stuff. <laughs> so yeah, I'll be posting some photos up of that when we load it up, and then when we deliver it on Saturday. So I'll be getting some progress. Uh, some progress photos and hope, hopefully maybe some videos too as, as the next few months go by um, as it gets worked on. So I'm, I'm just beyond ecstatic that progress is being made after, I think it's, I don't know, it's been in my house for a few years now, but <laughs> progress is progress, right? Every little bit, every little bit counts. So, but anyway. Anything else, guys, before we wrap it up? Yeah. yeah. Other than like, subscribe. Oh, yeah. Hit, smash the notification button to be reminded of every fresh bit of new material from Speed and Chrome Illustrated. That's right. And go subscribe to YouTube because once we hit 500 subscribers, we're going to do a giveaway. I forgot to mention that. So yeah. that's, uh, that's a big deal. I checked today. I think we're at like 440. So I think we jumped up like 20 since last week. 440. So, Repost oh, it and share it with all your friends. Nice. And so last week's video, our first week's video, is premiering right now on YouTube. Yeah. So next week, if all goes as planned, we'll be uh, live on YouTube and Facebook at the same time. So we're going to do a little upgrade on our software here and get rid of the little Powered by StreamYard logo in the corner, and it'll be powered by the Speed and Chrome logo next week. Hopefully we can get that sorted out. But anyway... All right, guys. Well, all right. Good seeing you again. Good and seeing uh, you guys. we'll do it again next week. Sounds next fun. week. Take care. All right. Later.